Ahoy, and welcome to the Jolly Reader. I'm your host, Captain Book. Okay, I didn't die. I just been MIA, spending the holidays with my family. I have belt testing night for karate, so there's that. But this book is intense, and I have 26 pages of notes for this section. So this is going to be a really long episode. So we're going over A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Chapters 12 through 28, pages 103 to 255. Let's recap part one. It's been a million years, so if you need to go back and listen to it, I suggest it. Pip joins forces with Ravi to potentially prove his brother Sal is innocent of Andy Bell's disappearance. Andy did have issues with her dad, Jason. Naomi had a crush on Sal, so she has potential motive. Pip also finds out that Andy may have been dating a secret older guy, and Pip receives a threatening note that says, Stop digging, Pippa. Things to look forward to. Naked pictures. You heard that, plural. Dealings down by the station and a photo that changes everything. That is not a naked picture, but here we go. Chapter 12. So Pip's at Kara's house, and she hasn't told anyone about the stop digging note she found during the camp out, and not even Ravi. Speaking of Ravi, he's texting her. So Kara's teasing Pip about them texting and asking if she should save the date for the wedding. Pip assures her that they're just working together, but like we know throughout the book that they're kind of crushing on each other. So hopefully they like finally kiss or something next section because it doesn't happen this time. Anyways, Pip is internally a hot mess because she's lying about the note, the stop digging one. Naomi knew they were camping out, so Pip suspects that maybe Naomi left the note. There's no way to track what was previously printed like on a computer, but she asked to borrow Kara's computer for like school that's what she says and she finds the family's printer which is named Freddie Prince Jr which is just like fantastic anyways so Pip goes to the printer properties like in the settings whatever I'm speaking computer lingo and I don't have my IT guy here today so anyways she sets it to keep printed documents and then she saves it like saves the setting to the computer so if Naomi or someone in the house prints another note like for Pip she would know By the way, that does not come back around this section, so who knows? Pippa, September 6, 2019, Capstone Project Log 13, transcript of second interview with Emma Hutton. This is Andy's friend. So Pip tells Emma that there was a rumor that Andy was dating an older man the same time she was with Sal. So Pip says the person wants to stay anonymous, like who told her that so emma says it had to be chloe because she's the only other person who knew which we know like from the last episode pip faked texting as chloe or whatever as i don't know as one of them as emma or whatever to get the information anyways emma guesses andy and the older man weren't together very long before she disappeared she never mentioned it to police because she thought annie made him up just to like stir up drama like okay kids we just mention whatever's important not important whatever we just Any information, just mention it to police. Hello. Goodness. Okay. So then Pip asked if Andy had any issues with Naomi. And Emma says no, but she did hate a different Ward, which that's her last name. So Mr. Ward, the history teacher, she thought was a quote unquote a-hole. And Pip asked why. And Emma doesn't know, but probably for telling her, like telling Andy her skirt's too short at school or something like just something like arbitrary since Andy wasn't in his history class. So Pip doesn't know how to feel because Mr. Ward said he hardly knew Andy, and Pip hates to think that Mr. Ward could possibly be the older man. That's what I think. I still think that for, like, no apparent reason. So anyways, Andy could obviously ruin him by the relationship because, like, he's a teacher and that's illegal. So anyways, Pip says Mr. Ward is not the type of person to be involved with a student. So you think, like, you don't know anyone until you know him. And he isn't the kind of teacher that a 17-year-old would lust after, which that's neither here nor there. (laughs) Anyways, Pip wants to ask Mr. Ward about it, but doesn't know how to casually ask why he lied about a dead girl. Persons of interest, Jason Bell in bold, Naomi Ward, secret older guy, and Elliot Ward, which is the dad, Mr. Ward. Chapter 13. Pip is in Mr. Ward's history class, and after class, Pip decides she's going to confront him about knowing Andy more than he said before. So Pip just like straight up says that one of Andy's friends said that Andy called him unsavory names the weeks before her death. And Mr. Ward said he was hoping this wouldn't come up, but I see you've been doing your research, Pip, or whatever. So here's the tea. 
Andy was bullying another girl in their grade. We later find out her name. There was some incident with a video posted by Andy online. We get more details on this later. Mr. Ward knew enough to know, like, Andy would be in trouble by the school and police. We'll get into it. So he decides to tell Andy's dad instead of the school. I, like, his whole thing is just saying, well finals were coming up and I what a shame to get her in trouble no she's horrible I don't know why you go to her dad not the school but anyways Monday the week Andy disappeared he told the dad and he never told the police after her disappearance like why are people not telling the police like stuff about this person missing hello so Mr. Ward is guessing that Jason that's Andy's dad talked to her and told her the source of his information like saying Mr. Ward told me that you're nasty so (laughs) That would explain why she was saying nasty things about him. Mr. Ward doesn't remember the girl Andy bullied, but Naomi would remember. And Mr. Ward warns, warns, that's really hard to say. Mr. Ward warns Pip not to fall down the rabbit hole with this investigation. Too late. We're already there. Pippa, September 12th, 2019. Capstone Project log entry 15. Transcript of second interview with Naomi Ward. (laughs) The girl that was bullied is named Natalie Da Silva. So she was pretty popular in Andy Sollard's competition. So Andy spread rumors about her trying to humiliate her. Some rumors included, but were not limited to, that (laughs) Natalie's family was incestuous. And Natalie watched people undress in the dressing rooms of like stores. It's super weird. And then my notes say read page 116. So this is like what goes down. So... Andy was hanging out with some friends from school, not Sal or any of like the people we know. And there's this guy, Chris Parks, who everyone knew Nat liked. She said she doesn't know all the details, blah, blah, blah. But they were sending flirty texts to Nat and Nat was responding because she liked Chris and thought it was him. But it was really Andy using his phone or whatever to text Nat. Nat sent a video of herself topless with her face in it. So he knew it was really her. And then I'm just like kind of summarizing this. I'm not reading this word for word. So Andy, like, sent, share the video all over school, and the comments were horrible. Practically everyone at school saw it before it was taken down. She even skipped the first two days back from school because she was so humiliated. Yeah, like, so I don't know why the teacher's trying to cover up for that, because that's absolutely terribly horrible. So anyways, Sal knew that Andy was behind the video, but he didn't want to get involved. Stupid. Ugh. So something else that happened between Andy and Nat... Natalie, I don't know why they call her Nat. All I can think of was a little annoying bug. Anyways, Nat got the lead in this fall play and Andy wanted the lead. So she told Nat to drop out and like to get Nat to drop out. She said Nat's older brother, Daniel, who is five years older than them, used to work at the school. I guess he was like a janitor in between jobs. He's conveniently a police officer now. We'll get there. So anyways, Andy said he hooked up with me when I was only 15. and I'm going to tell everybody if you don't drop out of this play. So Nat never said to Naomi if she thought this was true or not, but it scared her enough to drop out of the play. So Pip asked if Naomi was still in contact with Nat, and Naomi said not really, but she did hear some stuff about her. Nat in college was involved in some kind of fight. She was arrested and charged with assault. Naomi thinks that Nat may have spent some time in prison. Pip asked for Nat's number, because, like, that's who I want to talk to, someone responsible for assault. Chapter 14. Pip meets up with Ravi. He notices that Pip looks dressed up, even though she claims she just came from school. She's like really looking nice for him. It's like kind of cute. They're like flirting, whatever. So Pip drops a bomb that they're going to the house where two potential killers of Andy suspects grew up. So they're going to Nat and Daniel's house. So Ravi's like, uh, bad idea. And Pip's like, nah, you're the backup. Uh, One of them's a girl. It'll be fine. So on the car ride over, Pip catches Ravi up on what she has learned about Nat, et cetera, et cetera. I just explained it. The only thing she's keeping from Ravi is that she found that note or whatever. That note literally never comes back around, but I have my suspicions on who I think left it. Anyways, they get to the house and Pip has Ravi wait on the path on the side of the house. And Pip goes up the door where Nat answers. She introduces herself as a person who called the day before and Naomi's friend. So at first, Nat is worried like something's wrong with Naomi. Side note, Pip notices an ankle bracelet on Nat's leg, like a house arrest monitor thing. So anyways, Pip asks if she can ask some questions. And Nat's like, no thanks, and tries to shut the door. But Pip stops her. So Nat says that Andy ruined her life and she's not going to waste another breath on her, which, girl, I don't blame you. 
So then they both hear Robbie trip and he comes into view like, what an idiot. And Nat recognizes him and says, like, Sal was always nice to her. So I guess I'm going to, like, open up about this whole situation. So she explains that she got her ankle monitor because she punched her sweet make in college. Apparently, the girl was pulling a stunt like Andy would and has set Nat off. That's, like, insane. Like, I don't know. Anger issues. So anyways... They ask if Nat wanted Andy dead, and she replies, like, of course, after the video incident and all that, like, duh. Which, that, I mean, that would be something I said, yeah, I wanted him dead. Doesn't mean I did it, but uh, I'm going to be honest with you. No. (laughs) So anyways, Nat admits to leaving a threatening note in Andy's locker. So it was not Sal, like the police thought. And the note said, you stupid bee, I'm going to kill you. Which, I don't know why the police assumed it was Sal. Like, that's so random. But anyways, Nat guesses, she says, oh, I guess Sal got to her first, like, killed her before I could. So then Nat starts, like, bitterly laughing when she realizes that Pip thinks Nat's a suspect. And Nat claims she was home playing Scrabble with her parents that night that Andy went missing because she didn't have any friends left after the video went, like, viral. And Pip asks about Nat's brother, and she says he was out drinking with his cop friends the night like she disappeared so no murders in the house now f off and then she slams the door so pip and ravi google nat's brother daniel and ravi recognizes him as a police officer that shut ravi's down about like questions about sal like ravi was like i don't think my brother's guilty like can you look into this daniel's like just go home don't worry about it whatever he's kind of like a slacker throughout all this doesn't make him guilty just makes him trash so anyways Daniel became a police officer right before Andy's disappearance. They theorize that maybe he really did hook up with Andy and she was blackmailing him. Or maybe they started up again after he was married in 2013. And because like Andy's friends were saying like she always had cash on her and stuff. So Naomi and Nat are still possible suspects that could have worked together. After all this, Ravi suggests they get ice cream and Pip agrees, obviously. Too cute. Whatever. Moving on. Pip. September 14th, 2019, Capstone Project Log Entry <laughs> Entry 17. Pip is theorizing and researching Daniel. He could have motive to kill Andy if she was blackmailing him, and he could be the secret older guy, and it would have been illegal for like his age to hook up with her, and he was married, and he was a police officer. So like motive on top of motive on top of motive. So Daniel technically had the ability to tamper with evidence, uh, cause like police officer, hello. So Pip found a crime scene photo. There's a male officer backwards, the hair, whatever. It looks like it could be Daniel. Persons of interest, Jason Bell in bold, Naomi Ward, secret older guy, Nat Da Silva, Daniel Da Silva. Pippa, September 17th, 2019, Capstone Project Log, entry 18. <sighs> the Connecticut State Police responded to Pip's request on page 123. No, not 123, 129. So she asked for three things a transcript of the interview conducted with sal on april 19th 2014 a transcript of any interviews conducted with jason bell and records of the finding from the searches of the bell's residence on april 19th and april 20th so they reject like all these for reasons whatever but they do give the transcript conducted with Sal. And by refusing the others, they do confirm that Jason Bell was at least interviewed at some point during the investigation, which that seems normal. Like you interview friends and family, whatever. (laughs) Sal Singh recorded interview April 19th, 2014. There. Oh, okay. So like a bunch of stuff is redacted throughout this interview, like names and stuff. So I'm going to try not to like, fill in the blanks too much with just like my personal opinion but some of the stuff's like obvious like who was saying things so there's two officers interviewing him names redacted main points sal says the last time he saw andy was at school in the parking lot they ask if andy wanted to run away or had family problems sal just says normal teenage stuff and then like a big chunk of it's redacted but it wasn't anything recent according to him. So like not trying to interject, but we're probably kind of assuming like the whole situation with her dad and getting trouble about the picture or whatever. Police ask if Sal and Andy had a sexual relationship. 
Sal says, sort of. They hadn't gone all the way, you know? So Sal says they didn't argue often, and then the police bring up a written statement, which my guess was Andy's two friends, I can't think of their names, Chloe and whatever, that they were arguing the week at school, and Sal says, maybe a bit, but what they were arguing about was private. And they pressure him, and he still says he still can't tell. And my guess was drugs, or she was pregnant, or something like that. So anyways, Sal says he didn't have plans to meet Andy that night, like the night she disappeared. He was at his friend's house. Sal missed a call from her that night, and tried calling her after she went missing. Sal originally thought Andy just needed a break, and turned off her phone. Sal doesn't have any information where she could have gone, or who she could be with, so they, like, end the interview with him. Pip reasonably sees that this doesn't look great for Sal. Like, what was Sal covering up when he was like, I don't want to tell you what we were arguing about. So Pip knows Sal lied about the time he left Max's house because he said he left at midnight and the friends say it was like 1030. So what else could he have lied about in the interview? Pip's worried about showing Ravi the interview because like, obviously it's going to hurt him. And then Pip thinks about the note. If it was Sal, why would someone who we know is still alive, tell her to stop digging. And then persons of interest list stays the same. Chapter 15. Pip went across the street with her brother and dog to get sandwiches, and she sees Becca sitting in the sandwich place. So this is Andy's younger sister. Again, specifically what her teacher asked her to do, Pip goes over and talks to Becca, because she's not supposed to bother the families, and she's like practically dating Robbie. Anyways, Becca is hesitant, but like kind of okay to talk with her. So Becca knew that Pip was working on this project about Andy because she's kind of sort of seeing Stanley, the trash can reporter. So he like told her that Pip interviewed him, I guess. Yuck. So then Pip asked Becca if she can ask some questions. By the way, I want to know the age difference here because like Becca is supposedly like younger than Andy. And this reporter was like already a full grown freaking reporter when the sister went missing. So what the heck? But anyways, Pip asks Becca, did her and Andy get an allowance? Because she's trying to figure out where this money came from. So Becca says not really like her parents would just buy them stuff when they needed it. Then Pip asks if there was ever tension between Andy and the dad. And Becca's like, well, um, I don't think this is a good idea. I need to go. Like, I can't talk about this. So that's sus. And then Pip apologized and Becca's like, no, no, it's okay. Just like me and my mom found our new normal and things are getting better. So like, I don't want to dwell on the past. Like kind of reasonable, but also sketchy. Pip, September 22nd, 2019, Capstone Project Log Entry 19. Pippa knows it's wrong for her to talk. It was wrong for her to talk to Becca, but she couldn't help herself, which I don't blame her because I would have been disappointed if she just like walked out of there. So anyways... It made Pip realize that she's lacking insight into Andy's home life. So Pip looks Becca up on Facebook and she finds that she was friends with Jess Walker. This is just like a girl. Five years ago, nearly all of Jess's photos were taken with Becca and then they abruptly weren't. So Pip sends this Jess Walker person a message to see if she's willing to talk. Pip, uh, September 24th, 2019, Capstone Project Log Entry 20, transcript of interview with Jess Walker. So Jess describes the Bell family as dysfunctional, and mainly Becca's dad, Jason, was the problem. He would make little digs at them and pretend he was joking. Like, he would talk about their looks, and Andy needed to put on more makeup, and her face was her moneymaker, and the only reason she needed to go to college was to find a rich husband. Disgusting. So anyways, he did this to his wife, too, and he would count the wrinkles on her face and say she's getting old, and then he was like, I married you for your looks, and you married me for my money but like only one of us is holding the deal or something i he's gross so anyways becca became obsessed with her quote-unquote flaws and started skipping meals and then she like this friend jess describes like andy got louder and becca got quieter so jason made everything in the house a competition which obviously hurt the girl's sisterly relationship so becca always looked up to andy and she was only one grade below andy because they're really close in age so one time, Becca had Jess and her go to like this cl- calam- ah, calamity party. These are the ones that stupid Max used to throw, whatever. They're called cl- cl- I can't say it. Cl- ma- calamity? Calamity? Calamity. Calamity parties. So Jess said it was awful. And at one point, she couldn't find Becca. And she had to walk home tipsy at the end of the night alone. And she was like really mad at Becca. Like, you don't just ditch your friend at a party, whatever. And Becca didn't tell her who or what happened, but she did ask Jess to go get the morning after pill with her. So we all know what that means. 
Then they got in like a big fight over the whole party situation. And then that's when the wedge began between their friendship. So Jess mentions that Becca skipped some school and didn't and she didn't see her for a few days or weekends. Then Andy disappeared. So Jess said she barely saw the bells after that. And Jason was particularly irritated that the police interviewed him. Apparently, the night Andy disappeared, an alarm went off at his business. He left the dinner party to check on it. So alibi. He didn't want to tell the police because he had supposedly been drinking and drove, which is like a common freaking occurrence. Don't do that. So anyways... Pip circles back to the calamity, I will never say it, clam party. It's the clam party now because I can't pronounce it. Circles back to the clam party and asks if Andy was with anyone and just says some guy but not Sal. She didn't even know Sal was Andy's boyfriend until after she went missing. So this other guy she was pretty close to at the party just describes him. And with the help of Pip, they figure out it was Max Hastings, dun, 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 the friend that had the party or whatever. Pip concludes that Jess didn't know that Becca was hospitalized for self-harming because she mentioned that Becca skipped school, but like didn't know why. But we know why. Also, Max exclamation point. Actually, three exclamation points if we're being honest in my notes. In the interview with Pip, he said that he didn't know Andy that well and they were just acquaintances. Max could technically be the older guy since he's almost two years older than Andy. I think that's a stretch, but whatever. And I also said, how could she ruin him besides like the friendship with Sal? But that would ruin her as well. So whatever. Pip looks Max up on social media. His Facebook is tame, but she notices that Naomi had tagged him in photos, but not as his profile Max. Instead, the profile Nancy Tango Tits (laughs) is his fake profile. Apparently, this is a normal thing kids are doing these days so when colleges and jobs are looking up their social media they don't find all the weird pictures i was very tame and still am to this day and so was josh so like i don't know didn't participate in this but more power to you pip already learned with mr ward when you catch someone lying about a murdered girl you go ask them why Persons of interest, Jason Bell in bold, Naomi Ward, secret older guy, Nat Da Silva, Daniel Da Silva, Max Hastings, aka Nancy Tango Tits. <laughs> Chapter 16. Pip goes over to Max's house to ask, oh gosh, okay, sorry. I just like, sometimes I just remember what happens in the chapter and then I'm like, oh yeah, I've, like that's crazy. So anyways. Pip goes over to Max's house to ask how well he really knew Andy. He's annoyed at best over all of this. Like, he's participating in the conversation, but he's, like, super annoyed with her. So they go up to Max's room so they can talk out of earshot of his mom. Max insists that he didn't have a relationship with Andy, but he's avoidant of Pip's questions. So Max has, like, this corkboard thing in his room, and he keeps glancing at it. So Pip, like, throughout the conversation, makes her way over to it because she knows he's being sus. So she finds a selfie of Andy, and she's only wearing a pair of black underwear. So Max claims that he found the picture hidden in the back of a classroom. I say Mr. Ward's classroom, question mark. That No confirmation there. That's just me saying that. And... Max says Andy never knew he found it and Pip threatens Max by like going to the police or whatever. And he finally tells her why he was talking to Andy at the party. Max was buying drugs from her, pills and weed. Andy only sold to a few people and had a real dealer in town. That's how she got all her cash. And Max doesn't know who the dealer is. So Max also notes that Sal hated drugs. Go Sal. And would be mad if he found out she was selling, which is... Okay, so like I said, I think Sal knew that she was selling drugs and that's like what's he didn't that's what they're fighting about and he didn't want to say, but Max doesn't think so. So anyways, Max basically kicks Pip out of the house after that. Chapter 17. So Pip's at lunch with her friend, like the one she went camping with, and she asks Aunt about his friend George from soccer, and Aunt tells her George is throwing the next clam party this Saturday. So Pip asks if Aunt can get them all into the party, and the friends are like, what the heck, this is very not Pip, and she's like, some lame thing, like, one last hooray before homework and deadlines, whatever. So they're like, okay, let's go. So Pip, like, really, secretly doesn't want to go, but she's, like, trying to figure out what's going on. So Pip stops by Robbie's house to give him an update on everything. She's laughing a little too hard at his jokes. Like, that's a sure sign that you like someone. Anyways, Pip informs Robbie that she's going undercover at this party to try to figure out who was selling drugs to Andy. And it's so funny. And I like too much relate to this party section. So 
first, we have to get through this super weird part. Chapter 18. My first note says, um, okay. They're getting ready for this party, and Pip's parents are like, little Pip's first house party with alcohol and boys and everything. Like, what the heck? I was not raised like that. First of all, I never went to a party with alcohol. Call me lame. Whatever. I didn't. Second of all, if my parents thought I was, they would not be, like, cheering me on. They'd be, like, grounding me like I would never see next Tuesday. So anyways, they get to the house party and everyone's drinking, drunk, making out, whatever. It's the sounds horrible. So Pip keeps dumping her drinks and pretending to drink, like, with her friends or whatever, because she's undercover. Nice. So Pip didn't notice anything like drug dealing, but then she sees people going out to smoke, like, regular cigarettes. She's like, duh, people are, like, doing weed or whatever. They go outside. So Pip goes outside and finds this freaking creep, Steven, don't even get me started, who used to sit behind her in math. So, okay, hold on to your butts because (laughs) she tries to ask him if he has any weed and I'm deceased. Okay, so this is how she asks. She's like, I'm looking for some Mary Jane. I'm looking to blast a roach, herb, doobie, hippie lettuce, giggle smoke. And like, because she spent all day looking up what it's called on like Urban Dictionary. So then Steven's like, you're drunk uh, because you're like saying all this weird stuff. But he rolls a joint for them. And then Pip's like fake smoking the whole time, which like props to you because I don't know how to do that. Like she just like turns her head and like pretends to take a puff. I don't know. So he's probably drunk too. But anyway, so Icky Steven keeps moving closer to her and looking at her chest. And Pip's like, who do you buy from? And he's like, you can just buy from me. I'll give you a discount. Like, ugh. So Pip's like, nah, I want to buy direct. And Steven's like... I buy from some guy in town named Howie who deals like from the station parking lot where there aren't any cameras. I said train station question mark. I'm not really sure where they live. Like this is like a bus station. I don't know. So anyways, Steven says Howie would be mad if Steven was just giving out his number to random people or whatever. Pip's like, what a shame you don't have my number so I can buy from you or whatever. So he's like, oh, put your number in my phone. So... (laughs) Pip flicks the joint like on accident into the grass. So Steven has to go get it. And then Pip searches his contacts to find Howie Bowers. And she takes a picture with her phone of like his phone number and his information or whatever. So then Steven sits back up with her and Pip is legendary in this section. So she's like, just out of nowhere. She's like, sorry, I've decided drugs aren't for me. I have to go. (laughs) That's like literally something I'd say. So then typical gross. I don't know why I say typical. We don't even know this character, but he's gross and he calls her a tease and then he like grabs her arm and she gets out of his grip and she like runs back to the house. He calls her some other stuff too. And she locks the door and Steven's like furiously pounding on the door and she's like super shook up about it because he's freaking gross. And like, ugh, you could give a girl diamond earrings and she wouldn't be entitled to do anything sexually with you. Just like freaking public service announcement. Pippa, October 1st, 2019, Capstone Project Log, Entry 22. So Pippa waits at this mystery station that I don't know exactly what it is, but she didn't see any Howie drug dealing activities. She plans on going back to the station the next evening. She needs leverage before she calls Howie to get him to talk. Persons of interest. Jason Bell, Bold, Naomi Ward, Secret Older Guy, Nat Da Silva, Daniel Da Silva, Max Hastings, Drug Dealer, Howie Bowers, question mark? Because she doesn't know if he actually dealt to Andy. Chapter 19. It's the next night and Pip's sitting in her car when she sees potentially Howie. It's him, like spoiler alert. But anyways, she sees him texting on his phone and Pip calls the number that she has for Howie. And sure enough, this guy answers. So she like quickly hangs up, obviously. Then Pip sees a sharply dressed man approach Howie. It's a trash can reporter, Stanley. Stanley says this is like she can only hear parts of the conversation. But Stanley says this is the last time you'll hear from me. I don't have any more money, basically. And he hands Howie a big bag of cash. And all Pip can hear is Howie say, but and tell. And Stanley says you wouldn't dare and walks away. So Howie's still waiting for someone and a boy named Robin from Pip's school goes up to Howie and they exchange money in a brown paper bag, I'm assuming is drugs. Pip's taking pictures of all this. She also took pictures with Stanley the trash can. So Howie walks away from the station and Pip decides to follow him like on foot, screaming. Anyways, long story short, they end up on Monroe Street and Howie enters his house. It's not really a house. I don't know. It's like a bungalow, whatever. So Monroe Street is where Andy's car was found abandoned. So I don't know. Red flags. 
So then while looking at his house and car like parked in the driveway, Pip realizes something unknown to us, which we find out soon. She calls Ravi immediately and is like, meet me on Monroe Street right now. <laughs> Chapter 20. So Pip catches Ravi up about following a drug dealer, etc. And Ravi asks how she knows he's the one who supplied Andy. But first, Pip admits to Ravi that she lied about the police interview with Sal being delivered. And she feels bad for doubting Sal's innocence. And Ravi is like super understanding and wants to move forward, blah, blah, blah. So Pip knows how he supplied Andy because of his license plate number, 009KKJ. So this was like written in Sal's notes on his phone, if we remember from last episode. So that would explain why he lied to police like he knew Andy was dealing drugs probably. So anyways, if Sal thought Andy was still alive, he didn't want to get her in trouble with a drug charge if she like came back around. And the text he sent her was, I'm not talking to you till you've stopped. So like stop selling drugs. Anywho, Pip and Ravi knock on Howie's door because that's safe. So Pip introduces herself and explains that she has pictures on her phone of his drug deal with a kid from her school. And she said she won't go to police if he answers some questions about Andy. This guy's reluctant and gross to say the least, but does it obviously. So Ravi is like super protective over Pip the entire time. Super cute. Whatever. You just got to read the book yourself to like get their relationship vibes. But anyways, Howie thinks Andy started working for him in early 2013. She came to him and said she could get more business for him, like with the high schoolers for a cut. So Howie gave her a burner phone to do business. And she said she hid her stash and her phone under a floorboard in her closet so her parents wouldn't find it. And I say, dang, I bet a little sister could have found it, but that's just me. So then Pip asked what drugs Andy was selling at Calamity parties. I said it. <laughs> and he says weed, ecstasy, and a bunch of other stuff I've never heard of. They list it. I literally don't know what these drugs are. So then, but most importantly, she would, on a regular basis, sell roofies to some rich blonde kid, a.k.a. Max. So Pip asks if Howie and Andy were involved sexually, and he gets super defensive but says no, and it was only drug business. And Howie says the night Andy was killed, he was passed out drunk on his couch, which is not a very good alibi. So then Ravi and Howie basically almost get in a fist fight because Howie's accusing Sal. He's like, your brother killed her. I don't know why you're talking to me, you know? So Pip de-escalates it and says, it's time to go. And Howie like blocks them from leaving. And Pip's like, oh gosh, she's going to stab us to death. So, But instead he demands that Pip deletes the pictures, like the blackmail photos of him. So Pip in front of him deletes the photos and they leave. And then Howie, like, as they're leaving, warns her. He says, if you keep asking dangerous questions, you're going to get dangerous answers. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes, basically. So Pip and Ravi start walking home, reviewing what they learned and laughing and flirting. And she also mentions what I didn't put this in my note. She, like, deleted the photos but had backups or something. So she did need them again. Probably in the cloud. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> Pippa, October 4th, 2019, Capstone Project Log, Entry 23. <sighs> so Pip speculates that Howie could be the older guy, obviously, and Andy could ruin him because of the drug dealing. And also, like, let's mention she was under 18. Any of these relationships would be illegal. So <laughs> Max does have an alibi, obviously. He was at that party or whatever. But there's no reason he couldn't have left his house at some point. Especially because the girls were sleeping in a different room and the boys apparently went home. I don't know. So anyways, the most important thing Pip learned was about Andy's burner phone. Andy could have used the phone to contact the secret older guy. Pip thinks a possible older guy is Daniel, that's the police officer, Max or Hallie or an unknown person. I don't think it's Max because Max isn't even that much older. And like I said, I don't know how she'd ruin him. But anyways, Pip also notes that it's more than coincidental that trash can journalist stanley is connected to both howie and andy's sister persons of interest jason bell and bull naomi ward secret older guy nat to silva and then italics i think means she suspects they're the older guy so the next three are in italics daniel da silva max hastings and howie bowers chapter 21 pip's sitting down for dinner with her family and she gets a text and she, she like freaks out and she's like i have to go to the bathroom it's from an unknown number and it says quote unquote you stupid bitch, leave this alone while you still can. Pippa, October 7th, 2021, Capstone Project Log, Entry 24. 
Pip can't sleep because clearly she's freaked out about this message. Like, who wouldn't? So Pippa feels like she can't go to the police because she needs proof. And her suspect list is way too long. So she decides she needs to find this burner phone for, like, tangible, tangible proof. Add a couple syllables there. Chapter 22. Pip skips school and meets up with Ravi outside of Andy's house. Pip saw the mom leave and Becca just left, like, whatever. Long story short, she knows they're going to be gone for a certain amount of time. Enough time for them to look for the phone. So Ravi is not sure about this idea because obviously Sal's related to the crime and like it would not look good for him to break into this house, but he thinks it's worth the risk. So they're looking for a spare key in like normal places under the doormat, whatever. And Ravi finds one inside the wind chime, which is kind of, I don't know, clever, I guess. So Pippa brings garden gloves so they don't get their fingerprints everywhere. And Ravi's like, real men wear floral because he's wearing like the moms or whatever and they unlock the door and enter chapter 23 they're in the house and they're moving towards the stairs when they hear something upstairs it ends up being an adorable black cat that's rubbing all over them but ravi is like afraid of cats apparently he's like get this thing away from me which kittens are the best and this kitten is extra best so boo if there was anything i didn't like about ravi it'd be that So anyways, at the top of the stairs, they see a USB stick and a notebook bounce on the railing, which seems strange, but they don't like investigate it. They look at the rooms and find the one with the door shut. So they assume it has to be Andy's old room. Pippa also thinks that Ravi probably has a similar room in his home, which is like super depressing for Sal. They go into Andy's room and they look in the closet and they find a loose floorboard and pop it up, but there's nothing inside. They speculate where the burner phone is. Pip thinks it could be on Andy's dead body or someone knew where it was hidden and took it after she went missing, which is what I think. So they also find Andy's high school academic planner and Pip flips through the pages and she sees strange random letters with time scribbled next to them. They think it's code for people she was dealing to because Howie told her, like, don't use real names, use codes or whatever. So Pip takes a picture of each of these pages on her phone. As she's finishing up, they hear the front door slam. They panic and hide in the closet. They hear Becca talking to the cat and she says, that's where I left them. I'm assuming the notepad and the USB, but whatever. And then she tells the cat, you know, you're not supposed to go in this room because like obviously Andy's bedroom was open and she clicks Andy's door shut And Becca says bye to the cat and slams the front door again. Pippa, October 7th, 2019, Capstone Project Log, Entry 25. Some notable things in Andy's notebook planner was there's like one thing that said Fat to Silva, 0 to 3 Andy. So we're like, well, Pippa's assuming one would be the naked picture or like the topless photo. Two would be blackmailing to get the part in the play. But what's number three that Andy had over her? She's talking about Nat, obviously. There's a lot of TS, they think means train station. So I guess it was a train station anyways, where Andy would have been meeting Howie. And then there's also HH, which they think stands for Howie's house. And then there's IV, which they don't know what that stands for. There are three meetings with that one. So Pippa also sees scribbled out phone numbers. She tries calling them, but none of the numbers are connected or lead to anything. Persons of interest. Jason Bell in bold, Naomi Ward, secret older guy, Nat Da Silva, italics for Daniel Da Silva, Max Hastings, and Howie Bowers. Pippa, October 9th, 2019, Capstone Project Log 26. So Ravi's been trying to work out what IV could be, and he has a list. So like the Imperial Vault Nightclub, the IV House Inn, some person named Ida that's like a million years old. And four, cafe, which four in Roman numerals is IV. So Pip's looking at the, she looks through like all of them, but long story short, she looks at the website for the IV house and she's reading reviews. One of them's like the bathroom was dirty and took like a picture in the mirror and like of the tub and of the bathroom. And then it hits Pip. There's a long shot of the entire bathroom with a full length mirror and red and white tiled floor. This is the same background as the almost naked picture of Andy that Max had. So she took it in the IV Inn. Chapter 24. The next day, Ravi and Pip get to the inn. And there's this old lady there who thinks Ravi and Pip want a room. And Pip is like really awkward about it. And she's like, oh, what a cute boy. You're so lucky, blah, blah, blah. So anyways, they ask if she keeps records of people that stay there. 
And she's like, we do everything on the computer now. We used to have paper copies, but we got rid of them. So we wouldn't know from five years ago, whatever. So she shows this old woman a picture of Andy. And the woman says, yes, Andy stayed here a few weeks ago. And Pip and Ravi are like trying to correct her. And they're like, you mean five years ago? And the woman's assistant, she's like, no, a few weeks ago. And the woman's grandson comes down and tells them that she's like gets confused easily and she's getting older and like sometimes she still thinks her husband's alive etc cetera, etc cetera. and he he doesn't doubt that his grandma recognized andy but he does think her times are messed up so it probably was five years ago i'm not too sure i have my theories so ravi and pip talk about possibilities of who andy was meeting at the ivy house whoever the secret older guy was had to be living with someone and didn't want to get caught so daniel had a wife that's a police officer Max was living with his parents and they knew Sal so they would know if something hinky was going on. But Howie lived alone so there's no reason for them to meet at the inn. When they get in Pip's car, they see Howie in a heated conversation with Max Hastings. This is back at the station or whatever. Max lied again because he said he didn't know who the dealer was and hadn't bought drugs after like the parties in high school. But Max and Howie clearly know each other. Pippa, October 10th, 2019, Capstone, Project Log 27. So, like, she kind of recaps, Max is older, we know, had a picture of Andy that was taken in the hotel, regularly bought roofies from Andy, knows Howie, so Pip wants to follow the roofie trail. She asks Naomi whether drinks were being spiked at parties, and Naomi says not that she knows of. Persons of interest, all the same, but Max isn't bold this time. Pippa, October 11th, 2019, Capstone, Project Log, Entry 28. Emma texted Pip saying she thought, oh, because, like, Pip's trying to get information about these roofies. So she said she thought some girls thought their drinks may have been spiked, but everyone got really drunk at those parties, so maybe they were just using it as an excuse to, like, explain their behavior. Chloe says something similar, and then Pip sends emails to people who were tagged in Naomi's photos of, like, parties from back then. But she tells them that she's a reporter for CNN just so she could get responses. So this girl, Laura, responds and she does remember people talking about their drinks being spiked. And she said she had a friend, Natalie Da Silva, who thought her drink was spiked once. She only had one drink and she couldn't remember anything from that night. And then another girl named Joe responds and says they do know of instances of drinks being spiked. An unknown friend, like she won't say who, was completely messed up and couldn't remember the party. Her friend went to the police after to report the incident. She spoke to a young officer and nothing came of it. So Pip concludes that Max is buying roofies from Andy and girls were getting their drink spikes. So put two and two together. Disgusting. And Nat could have very well been one of those girls, but she's hostile. So Pip's not going to talk to her. And the young male officer, she does research to like confirm this, is likely Daniel because he was like the only one that was like under 40, whatever. So why wouldn't he take this seriously, this roofie situation? So Pippa says if she stopped her project right now, Max would be her number one suspect. But we're not, we're like halfway through the book, so that's not happening. Pip wants leverage before talking to him, so she's going to look through his fake Facebook profile. <laughs> Chapter 25. Pip calls Kara, and she basically asks her to hack Naomi's Facebook so she can view Max's fake profile. Kara does it like whatever because it's not like to hack naomi it's to hack max so pip goes back to photos from 2014 and looks for anything suspicious or andy in the background etc etc until she finds photos from the night that andy went missing she knows because like the clothes they were wearing and police whatever whatever so between millie max and naomi there are 19 photos from that night all three of them uploaded their photos on monday between 9 30 and 10 p.m which is more than coincidental Naomi said they decided Monday night to tell the police the truth about Sal's alibi. So why upload the photos then? Like, it seems sus. So at five in the morning, Pip, like, wakes up because something's drawing her to the photos again. So all four of the friends from the party are in the frame. Naomi is in the background and she's looking at her phone. And then the other three were standing together in the photo. But the camera must have been at least five feet from them. Who's taking the picture? Chapter 26. So this is like Pippa. She says it had to be Sal. Pippa enlarges the photo and enhances it, which will make Josh mad. And <laughs> you can see on Naomi's phone that it was 12.09 a.m. And the friend said Sal left at 10.30. There is a window in the background and the flash of the camera, so you can't see who's holding it. But there is a blue shirt in the reflection, the same shirt Sal was wearing that night. 
So Pip prints out these three enlarged photos and calls Ravi to meet her. In the car, she shows Ravi the photos. He's like, Sal never lied to the police. Like, he really did leave at 12 or whatever, a little after 12. So why did his friends lie about the time he left? Which we find out by the end of this, it's crazy. So Pip decides to test her theory. So long story short, she sets a timer and they act out the whole murder to the best of their ability. So like bullet points, let's do it. They pull up to where Andy and Sal would have intercepted, go to a secluded area, fake a heated argument about the drugs, fake putting a body in the trunk, drive to nearby wooded area, find a downed tree that already made a shallow ditch, pretend to put the body in it and cover it, jog back to Pip's car, drive to Monroe Street where Howie's house is and where Andy's car was left, and then walk to Ravi's house. If Sal left at midnight, he would only have 45 minutes. It took them, even faking it, without a real body, 58 minutes. So Sal could not have possibly done it. Ravi picked up Pip and like spins her around, whatever, cute. Pip isn't sure if it's enough to take to police, but they need to know why Sal's friends lied. So she plans on asking Naomi, but she needs to do it alone because like she, they say that Naomi came and talked to Ravi without like thinking of Sal and crying or whatever. Chapter 27. Pip calls Kara and after she, if she can come over and Kara's like, yeah, I'm studying and Max and Naomi are both here working on resumes. So Pip's like, all right, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Holy crap. So Pip throws down. She is surprised by how angry she is at Max and Naomi for basically ruining Sal with a lie about his alibi. So Pip shows Max and Naomi the pictures of the night Andy disappeared, like of the time and his reflection of his shirt and stuff as a courtesy before she goes to police. Max is defensive, but Naomi is more open. So Pip explains that Sal took the picture after midnight, like I explained before. Naomi's like, we're going to have to tell her. And Max is like, shut up. So Pip says that Sal never lied to please. His alibi was true. He left at 1215. You all took away his alibi, but why? Chapter 28. Buckle up. We're doing this. Naomi confesses. She says, someone made us. Naomi, Max, Jake, and Millie got a text Monday from an anonymous number. This person told them to delete the pictures of Sal from that night and upload the rest like normal. Then go to the police Tuesday and make the 1030 statement about like him leaving. So Pip asks why. And Naomi says, because this person knew something bad they had all done. And Max says, something bad happened on New Year's Eve 2013. And Naomi's like, Max, this happened because of you. Like, she's really mad at him. And she says she only went along with this because she was scared and she regrets it. Blah, blah, blah. So here's the long and short of it. Naomi, Max, Jake, and Millie all got super drunk at a party. Sal was not there. The party got shut down. They couldn't find a taxi and it was too cold to walk. So Max was like, I'm sober enough to drive. He wasn't. Stop drinking and driving, y'all. So Max was driving too fast down the highway. And then Max is like, a guy just like came out of nowhere. And Naomi's like, no, he was standing well back on the shoulder and you lost control of the car, you monster. So they pull off on the side of the road and check on this guy. And Naomi's like, there was so much blood and his legs were bent wrong, whatever. And Max is like, we thought he was dead. We thought he wasn't breathing. So we just like left because we're trying not to get in trouble. But really it'd be like Max who got in trouble, but whatever. So anyways, they went back to Max's house, cleaned off his car, and then fake crashed into like a tree in his front yard. And then his parents, like since he's rich, whatever, replaced his car, didn't even think anything of it. So Naomi says the man they hit was in a coma for a few weeks and lived, and now he's paraplegic. But someone somehow knew what they did and said to do what they said, or they would go to the police. So that this is like the anonymous texter. They all swore they didn't tell anyone, but Naomi says they all thought Max got drunk and told someone. And Max is like, you got drunk all the time, too. Who said you, like, didn't say? But they both, like, deny they said anything. Loose lips sink ships, just saying. So Pip asks Naomi why Max said that she was MIA the night Andy disappeared. And Naomi says she was talking with Sal. He wanted to talk about Andy. He was angry about something. We're assuming the drugs. But he didn't tell her what. And he decided that night that he was going to end things with Andy, and he almost seemed relieved about it. So Pip says Sal was innocent. Someone killed Andy, then killed Sal to make him look guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Naomi is crying and saying sorry. She thought it was only a small lie at the time, but never thought Sal would end up dead, obviously. So Pip straight up asks if Max killed Andy, and he's like, uh, no. Like, of course. He's not going to just admit it. We still have, like, a whole section part left in this book. So Kara is begging Pip not to go to police because she doesn't want to lose her sister. Her mom already died of cancer, whatever. So Pip agrees not to go to police because Naomi's always been like a sister to her as well. 
And she really, like, was stupid, but she didn't, like, wasn't driving the car or anything. So anyways, Pip says she's going to find out who really did this, and that's the only way to clear Sal's name and protect Naomi at the same time. Done. Lingering questions, holy moly. There's a lot to unpack, but, like, my main question is how could someone else know about the accident? Like, someone had to have told, because, hello. I don't think Andy is dead. That's just a personal opinion. Um, I think she could have been, like, mad that Sal wanted to break up with her. I I don't know. And then, like, I think Becca knows more stuff or, like, found the phone because, like, little sister, Snoopy, whatever. And then I still think Mr. Ward was, like, the secret older guy because that'd be disgusting and crazy. So I guess that's all I have. Hopefully I can get the third and final episode out to you soon with Christmas and stuff. It gets a little crazy. And then I bought the next two books. There's apparently two other books uh, by the same author that follow Pip, but I don't think they're like necessarily like sequels. They're kind of like Box in the Woods. Anyways, in closing, thanks for listening. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube at the Jolly Reader Podcast. Subscribe so you get notifications when new episodes are posted. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please leave a review because it helps other crewmates find this podcast. Share, share, please. Merry Christmas. Share, share, share. Happy holidays. Whatever you celebrate, please share. Um, If you like secondhand embarrassment, stay tuned for the outtakes, and I will talk to you next time for part three of a good girl's guide to murder until we sail again this has been the jolly reader bone voyage hey you made it to the outtakes let's do it testing i'm running on coffee pop tarts and antidepressants so we'll see how this goes Holy moly, this is going to be a long episode. Okay, let's check this. Let's see. What do I got for myself? Oh, because you're so humiliated. Ow. (laughs) That's going in the outtakes. Okay, so anyways. He could have moment. My goodness. Okay. Holy moly, my throat is getting sore. I am Allie, and you are with me to my mom.